and welcome to another episode of Mark and Mark in the Morning. Blenderschools.net's homeroom. So what are we doing today, Mark? Uh, well, we have some new features. That's correct. Just, just before Christmas, we installed Blackboard 9.1 Service Pack 3. Service Pack 3, and of course, the we learned that the odd service packs always have new features. How it's, about it? Mark? It's odd that they have new features. Yeah, That's what so. I thought. So. Not like this is a total upgrade of a version, like right. from eight, nine, where oh, there's a lot of changes. But basically, when we install service packs, um, and specifically the odd ones, we get a few new features. And these are basically enhancements that were requ requested along the way, yeah. uh, right. and, and along with some certain bug fixes and so forth. Right. Too, so. Bug fixes and enhancements. And enhancements, both. yeah, both. So let's really, we're focusing today on the enhancements. Right. So uh, some of you um, might not have seen some of these new enhancements because some of them are very, very small. Uh, subtle. Subtle, yes, that's a good <laughs> word. Very, very small and subtle, and uh, you can't always see them, but they're pretty cool. I think there are a couple that are going to save yeah. you a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. So Should we dive right in? Yeah, let's do the first one, which is uh, new positioning of announcements. Um, yeah. If you go to your announcements page, um, and again, you can click either from the home page, more announcements, or go right to your announcements page. And if you use announcements a lot, which right. I think every teacher yeah, probably does if yeah. they're teaching online, yep. um, all your announcements would always go to the top right. in an order. Yes. And if I wanted one to actually stand out above all the others, whether I post a new announcement or not, I really couldn't do that. And right. the old version that you could do that called a permanent one, but right. now they have this new gray bar. Yeah, there's this new feature now where you'll see a new gray bar. It says new announcements appear below this line. It just gives you a bit more control. So let's say I have these two announcements and I want them to show at the top no matter what. Right. All I need to do is move the gray bar below those two announcements. Correct. They'll show at the top, but also your date ranges and all that still apply. Because that was the other thing with permanent, right? Yep. It would show at the top, but it would never go away. It never go away. So now you've got like kind of like a combination of the two. Correct. So let's do a new announcement. You know it's where the line is. It's like yep. the third down so in the list, right? So basically it should be above the welcome, yeah. but not above the other two exactly. above that line. So let me just quick create a new announcement. Uh, I'll just throw that in there with, without any content in it, just for the sake of time. Yep. And there you see it shows just below the line. Correct. So you get a little bit more control. Um, so if you have something that you you know you want to push up above the top that's important, you can do that like relatively. Your contact easy. information or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right, exactly. Whatever. Policies or yep. something like that. So it's always at the top. Yep. Uh, and so that really is one of those subtle things that you probably didn't just even didn't see. even notice. I yeah. mean, I know when I first looked at it, I didn't. I had to look no. at the actual list of things. Yep. Yep, so you got a little bit more control on positioning of announcements. That's one. Yep, so um, what do we got next, Mark? Well, there's a series of, of grade related Correct. ones. Correct. Um, so, and, and we can see a couple of them right away. I'm just going to open up the grade center view there. You can see some of them yeah, right out of the uh, gate. Yeah, you're going to see two columns at the top level, which is the needs grading and the full grade center, which we always saw the full grade right. center. Um, but now you'll see some indentation. Um, which is really nice because uh, basically that menu would grow if you had smart views or whatever you created would just be kind of in line where now they have all the smart views indented. So you know these are smart views right. and these are actually uh, grade center functionalities. Yeah. Um, what if people don't know what a smart view is? Maybe we should even detail yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not sure what the smart view is, and it really is, I think, a powerful tool. Oh, yeah. If you're an online teacher and you really want to pull or filter things uh, consistently on a constant basis, then you probably want to create a smart view. Instead of going in and filtering every time, right. you can create a smart view that will do that filter for you all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, Mark, why don't you tell them maybe where they can get some information on that? Yeah, so remember we have our help button right at the top middle of Blackboard. So if I just come up here to help, it's going to take me to the ticket system, but we also have our knowledge base on the right-hand side here. You can just search. So you could search for smart view. I'll just search for smart, let's say. And we have a tutorial that shows you how to build these smart views. And there's like a million and one different ways you can use these. But it could be something simple like just show me my journals or yeah. just show me my safe assignments that need to be graded. Yeah. You know, you can do like that. Or show everything that's in progress at yeah, the time. Exactly. Um, and you can see that if a student left an online test and never completed it, meaning he's in progress. Though. Yep. And you can even do like show me all my students who have a less than a 75%. You can do lots of different things. With basically, them. any filter you want to apply, you can build it and create a smart view on it, which gives you basically one click access to that filter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you do a lot of grading, if you facilitate courses, you really need to learn smart views. It's going to save you a ton of time. Yeah. So now, um, probably one of the biggest enhancements of all, yes. and probably the thing that makes everything so much easier, <laughs> is the needs grading. Yes, um, needs grading is something we actually used to create a little smart view. We would remember? create a smart view for. Yeah, so we in most of my for yeah, it, in so. most of my courses, I now have two needs grading, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Up at the top, you'll see there's this new needs grading option. It's the first thing there. And when you click it, 
What it does is it shows you anything in your course that needs to it's be graded. graded. Essentially, it's anything that has an exclamation point yep. in the grade center is what it is. So an online test that might have an essay question, right. an assignment that was submitted, a yep. safe assignment that has not been graded yet, mm -hmm. um, maybe some journal entries or discussion boards, yep. whatever it may be, if it has not been graded yet. And it tells you that right on the column what they are. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a decent tool. So th there's a couple of little, you know, pieces to it that are really nice. Number one is that it, it brings everything together. Correct. Like Mark was saying, in our, our old needs assessment, it would show, needs a grading would show the columns. Correct. Now it's like, there might be a test, then a safe assignment, then an assignment. And whichever one of these you click on, you grade one, you just move on to the next, move on to the next until you run out of things to grade. So basically what it does is it does the grading attempts sequence yes. from the column level of the right. gradebook. And it bridges Building Both. blocks That's and right. everything. Like yeah. there's no attempt grading for say safe assignments. Correct. But there is in this. So it's really good for that. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have a good example here of there's just a big list of what type of uh, assignment it is or test or whatever, what the name of it is, who submitted and when they Correct. submitted. And you've got a couple options. Um, depending on whether it's a test or an assignment, you have these little double down arrows. So it pulls some things from the grade center, like grade anonymously, grade by question. Yeah. And, and again, that's the nice thing is, let's say I'm grading an online test. Yeah. I don't want, um, and there's only an essay question there. Yeah. I don't want to go to one student, click grade, and go to the next student, click grade, and so forth. I want to pull out all the essay questions. Yeah. So this will give you that option still. Yeah, and if you don't know grade by question, you should check out, I, I don't know which number episode it is, but we have a Mark and Mark episode Correct. on that. Go and search <laughs> for it. Grade by question is really helpful yeah. on tests with essay questions in them. Now, if you just want to see someone's submission, their attempt, all you need to do is just you just click on their just name. Click on their name. Yeah. Takes you to directly to the attempt, which is another Correct. thing. It doesn't take you to like grade details or anything Not like that. that. It takes you right into the attempt. There I see the student submission and I can grade right here as well. Right there, that's correct. Um, and when I hit save and next, it takes me on to the next student I need to grade yeah. or the next assignment I need to grade, whatever's next in the sequence. Which brings us to another functionality right. yep. um, <laughs> that we didn't have before is the feedback box. How yeah, about and the feedback and the teacher notes now, again, subtle change may not have even noticed. The visual text box editor is now there. Before Correct. it was just a box you could type in. Yeah, just plain text. Yeah. It's just plain text, you couldn't highlight, you couldn't, you know, uh, bold and those types of Do things. And now, uh, because it has the WYSIWYG editor in there, yeah. some really cool things is it also gives us our mashup. Tools. Exactly. I mean, you've so, got everything. You no. could attach a video feedback. That's right. If you wanted. So if you created a YouTube video for feedback, and you could attach that video yeah. right for them. I know some things I've used it for already is web links. Yeah. If I want to refer a student to an activity, you know, that Correct. I want them to do for reinforcement. I've used a lot of web links in this feedback already, so it's nice for that. Yeah, and there's going to be some pretty new functionality coming out here too, a new mashup tool that we're really excited Ooh, about. Secrets. That, that's, uh, yeah, Don't secrets give away secrets. That, <laughs> that will be really a great option yeah, too. Keep stay future, tuned so. if you tune your computer to yep. Mark and Mark. Yeah. Um, there's another minor change though in the toolbar too is this They've added a symbol picker. Yeah, so anywhere the WYSIWYG editor is, even in your content area, create an item, whatever yeah. it may be, we have now a symbol picker. Yeah, um, and which I allows think, to do some more complex yeah. symbols within your text. I think this should sort of brings Blackboard in line with most of the Web 2.0 tools. Like yeah. they usually have a symbol picker, so it just makes things a little bit easier to get your symbols. So. Yeah, those those are most of the new ones. We have one other one, right? That we're going to talk yeah, about we the have adaptive one other release. One. Um, the adaptive release. If you do use adaptive release, uh, basically in the past you could uh, put a role on a gradable item, but not a calculated column. Right. So, like for example, um, let's say I don't want my students to be move to move on to the second marking period until the calculated column for the first marking period is eighty percent or better. Right. I couldn't actually produce that role no. in the past. I can now. Yep, based on a calculated column. And if you again, if you don't know calculated columns, go help to our desk. help desk. Calculated we have tutorials. Columns. What if they don't know adaptive release? Well, actually, we have. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had a webinar that we just did recently on adaptive release, or I should say, Mark did uh, recently on adaptive release. The Royal Week. Uh, so you can actually use our help desk for that, um, and there's videos in there. But uh, this is an actual one-hour full online session. Um, that has been recorded and is available now for Act 48 credit hours. Yeah, right, exactly. So you, if you literally uh, registered for that, uh, watch that at one hour event, which would go over all of the adaptive release uh, capabilities, uh, you would also get an Act 48 credit hour for that. Yeah, an adaptive release essentially allows you to release 
different piece of content to different students within okay. the same course. So if you've never used it before, you might be used to turning content on and off. Yes. So that's for all students. Yeah, and this was really great for special needs students, differentiation, and so forth, where Mark could log into a course and actually get maybe some type of visual content, right. and I might log into the same course, but I might get some text content. Exactly. Um, and it really gives you the ability to customize pathways for different students yep. and different needs. And again, based upon scores and other roles too, right. uh, you can really customize your course. It really is a very, very powerful. There's a lot you can do with it. Very, very powerful, uh, but it can be overwhelming. It can be. <laughs> and in fact, combining it with calculated columns, you can make really complex calculated yes. columns. Yes. I mean, you can literally say like, uh, my students will only see this content if their name begins with S and they've done all their <laughs> journal entries. That's correct. You can get that complicated if you want to. I don't know if you ever would, but. <laughs> um, but if you want to find that uh, recording, if you go to our website, go to professional development and go to the online section, you'll see it right there in the training archives and you can get one hour back 48 for viewing it. That's so. correct. Okay. So those, I think that pretty much wraps up. Yeah, SP3, wraps it up. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. SP3, <laughs> uh, you know, fixed a lot of bugs in our system, but it also gave us some really subtle um, functionality. Uh, that, Time savers. Yeah. Those are the key ones. Yeah, it's just little things sometimes that just make it so much better. So uh, I want to thank everyone for watching another episode of Mark and Mark in the Morning. Blendingschools.net's homeroom. Have a great day.